Hello everyone. Today's topic is development of interuterine devices and their applications. In this part, we will discuss about types of interuterine devices, mechanisms and their duration of protection. So let's start. According to their users, interuterine devices basically three types. First one that is non-medicated IUDs or interuterine devices and second one that is copper releasing IUDs and third one that is hormone releasing IUDs. So basically you can see in this picture there is various types of IUDs like Grafenbach's rings that is the simplest type or first in it is included in first generations of IUDs and lipase loops also it is a first generations IUDs and the most safest that is T coils or copper T IUDs as you can see in this pictures it is a T shaped or T like structures of this kind of IUDs and that is that, uh, that is another types of IUDs it is the most developed IUDs so let's discuss about some non-medicated IUDs basically this kind of IUDs are specially designed for regulate the or prevent the uh, fertilizations and it is well known as non-medicated as because there is no hormonal types of uh, medications is inserted okay so first that is the lipase loop it is almost loop like a structure that's why it's called so called lipase loops another reason for this kind of name that is it is designed by dr jack lipase and uh, according to the uh, according to his name this kind of devices is known as lipase loop it is loop like structures it is basically a double a shaped device you can see in this picture you can see there is a S shaped designs and it is almost double S shaped devices. Okay, it is made up of polyethylene's impurgement with barium sulfide. So, see the structures of Leaps loops type of IUDs. And next examples of this kind of non medicated IUDs that is the Grafenbox rings, it is almost a uh, uh, round shaped interuterine devices when we see the working principle of this kind of non-medicated IUDs the working principle is developed in a my uh, in a immune response in a endometriums and it can produce more of phagocytosis by this phagocytosis that kills the sperm cells and prevent the fertilization when some things kill the sperm cells as well as the egg cells it uh, it uh, passively it's prevent the fertilization right you all know when uh, the when eggs and sperms are met into the fallopian tube after that the uh, this fertilization occurs so basically when when by the phagocytosis the sperm cells are killed then uh, it's prevent uh, the fertilization right when no presence of sperm cells or kills sperm cells uh, are there, so how can develop the fertilization, right? So basically, in this manner, so they prevent uh, the non-medicated IUDs pre prevent the fertilization. But this kind of devices are no longer uh, no longer uses right now. So next type that is the copper releasing IUDs or copper containing IUDs. The IUDs which which is made up of copper like uh, metals okay or copper metal so basically the example of this kind of copper releasing IUDs is uh, included with CUT 380 multi CU 375 Nova T 380 there are the IUDs which is included into the copper T releasing uh, devices or copper T copper T IUDs so uh, Basically, it is or, or uh, most kind of copper releasing IUDs are T-like 
structures or T-shaped. The main body of this kind of devices are made up of plastic polyethylene coated with barium sulfides. And most important things that is the arm of this kind of devices are wrapped with a copper wire. That's why it's known as copper releasing IUDS. As you can see in these uh, pictures, there is a different kinds of different types of um, copper releasing devices is here. So you can see there is a copper wire, copper wire in a vertical, uh, vertical arms and you can see here also there is a T separate designed uh, IUDS and uh, it is wrapped with a copper wire and uh, the red one red and blue one this is also t shaped designs and uh, the previous one was carved uh, t shaped but the arm of horizontal arms are slightly curved but in case of that there's a plain horizontal lines and copper wire wrapped in a horizontal and vertical in both uh, uh, both arms of these devices and also here you can see there is also a copper uh, copper wire is wrapped in these devices so basically copper releasing ideas are looks like this the working principles of this kind of uh, copper releasing IUDS main things that is the cytokines cytokine toxic cytokines are released by the toxic toxicity of the copper and causes local infertility when copper is released into the uterine cavity, there is a local action that is cytokinase a release which can cause local infer infertility into the uterine cavity. Okay. The third one that is the hormonal IUDS or hormone releasing IUDS. It is included or example of this kind of hormone releasing IUDS are included with progesterone and the LNG20 are the examples of hormonal IUDS. This hormone releasing uh, IUDS are this kind of hormonal releasing IUDS make the uterus unsuitable for implantations by suppressions in endometrial changes. It causes some endometrial changes by releasing different kinds of hormones that is uh, progesterone is contains of progesterones and LNG20 is also contained with a hormone that is levonorgestrel. It is uh, uh, levonorgestrel 20, 20 is a dose quantity and it is released or uh, put in progesterone, the progesterones release at 0 0.5 uh, microgram per day. Okay. And uh, the progesterone also contains with 38 mg of progesterone. This is our hormones. By this kind of hormones, it causes a changes in endometriums or uh, in the uterine cavity. And it's created a unfavorable or unsuitable environment for implantations. By this uh, techniques, they can prevent the pregnancy or they can prevent the uh, they can prevent the fertility. In these pictures, you can see uh, this is a LNG20 devices, which is almost like a T shaped or uh, T shaped structures or T shaped designs, and the horizontal arm or head of this T shaped device are slightly curved, and uh, it is not uh, wrapped with a copper wire. Okay. Next, we will discuss about the general, uh, sorry, generation-wise uh, development of IUDS or intrauterine devices. So let's see. According to the generation-wise development of intrauterine uh, devices, there are three types of uh, three generations IUDS are there. Uh, first generation included with uh, lipase loops and uh, Grafenberg rings which are no longer used. As you can see in these pictures, this is the round shaped one is called, known as Grafenberg rings and the loop like structures that is Lipes loop. The working principles of Lipes loops and Grafenberg rings is uh, already discussed that is the it causes the endometrial changes and uh, produces more phagocytosis by which they can kill the sperm cells and avoided the pregnancy. 
secondly that is the second generation almost all t separate copper devices are included in the second generation devices or uh, second generation iuds so basically cut 380a is also included in the second generations where the number represent the area of the square area of copper in mm square of the devices so here cut 380 uh, the 380 is represents the copper unit or copper surface area of this cut 380 devices and a b c d it represent the size and d is the largest one okay the failure rate of this kind of generations is almost 0.2 to 0.3 percent and it is t shaped devices with polyethylene frame holding 380 nm or, or nanometer squares of exposed to surface area of copper it is framed its frame contains barium sulfate thus making the radio opaque so basically that is the characteristics of second generations cut 30 uh, 330 380a devices so another types of second generation that is cut 380 ag ag represent the different metals which is included in this uh, devices it is almost like cut 380 device 380a devices in this types on the same has a silver a uh, silver wrapped or silver area or you can say a silver core to prevent the fragmentations and extend the life span of copper copper is a life span so it can extend korar jonno alada metal use kora hocche that is ag that is the difference between the cut 380a and the cut uh, t 380 ag basic difference is uh, it is improved uh, by this kind of uh, metals for uh, improving the life span of coppers and for pigmentations okay and cut 380 it is the another kind of second generation devices iuds and in this case the copper sleeves fused at the end of the uh, horizons tms to facilitate or easier loading of insertion basically in this kind of um, iuds there is a copper wire wrapped uh, in both the horizontal uh, part of this devices and the vertical part of the of this kind of devices so this kind of devices is look like that as you can see the head of this t separate device also wrapped with a copper wire and the vertical one also wrapped with a copper uh, copper wire another one that is included in the second generation iuds that is the most important that is nova t380 here the horizontal head of the t shaped device is not uh, not state right it's it is a curved shape as you can see in this uh, picture it is uh, not a state line so horizontal uh, head of this t is not uh, state it is a curved shaped designs it has also silver coated to the copper wire life span of this kind of devices is 5 years flexible arms and large flexible roofs at the bottoms to prevent the cervical perforation uh, perforation so basically you can see in this um, pictures or in these devices there's a flexible uh, loops which can prevent the cervical perforations and the last one included in the second generation that is multi load cu 375 375s also indicate same thing and uh, uh, it is licensed for 5 uh, years that is the life span of this kind of devices is 5 years this multi load device is specially designed as compared to the uh, this another copper t devices it is almost look like u shaped or you can say the t shaped t head is u shaped okay as you can see in this pictures this is a u shaped designs and this arms are flexible this flexibles are designed to minimize the expulsion the failure and expulsion rates are 50 50 in this case uh, in in this kind of devices or in this kind of multi dot cu 375 devices working principle of all copper iuds are almost same 
basically it produces a local inflammations in the uterine cavity where this uh, kind of devices are placed that appear to prevent sperm from reaching the fallopian tubes as we all know when the eggs and the sperms are made into the fallopian tubes and they causes fertilizations right so basically this kind of devices appears to prevent the sperm from reaching the fallopian tubes copper bearing iuds release copper inside the uterus cavity and the fallopian tubes also enhance the debilitating effect of sperms it can affect the mobility of sperms also okay research various research found that uh, that copper sources which are, uh, are the main source of this IUDS that is a copper content copper content this copper content produces a changes in uterus that either destroying the fertilized egg or prevent the fertilized egg from implanting in uterus by this process they can lock the pregnancy and the third generation it is included with levonorgestrels or more uh, latest um, development of iuds or it is called merina is a brand name of this kind of devices it is also known as lng20 and it is t separate but it did not were wrapped with a copper wire it is look like a white t shaped designed iuds and it is the latest version of IDUS or modern IDUS. Quickly take a look uh, the efficiency comparisons of all kind of IUDS. So basically you can see in this chart different kind of devices are included and uh, their percentage of pregnancy and the expulsion rates and removal rates are included in this chart. So as you can see uh, the pregnancy rate of this uh, all kind of uh, IUDS According to the all kind of uh, IUDS, the lipase loops has high expulsion rate that is 12.15 and the pregnancy rate of this lipase loops that is 3% only and removal rate also 12 to 15% and copper T200 uh, is included with uh, pregnancy rate 3% and expulsion rate 8%. So, uh, and the most important and the most popular that is the copper T380A is included the 0.5 to 0.8 percent pregnancy rate and expansion rate also 5. Okay, the progesterone IUDS also have the pregnancy rate that is 1.3 to 1.6 and levogestrel's IUDS that is uh, the well known that is LNG20 is uh, it is included with pregnancy rate 0.2 percent so basically in this chart uh, you can you can expect a short question so from this uh, chart that is uh, like expulsion rate high expulsion rate iuds uh, named the high expulsion rate of iuds uh, the examples of lowest rates rate expansion rate iuds the examples of the lowest rate expert uh, lowest expulsion rate iuds that is the progesterone that is progesterone con containing iuds as well as um, you can um, say the removal uh, low lowest removal rate iuds uh, is also progesterone okay and the high removal rate of uh, iuds is uh, levogestrels that is the lng20 okay by this chart you can easily remember the pregnancy rate of all kind of devices or iuds as well as you can remember the expulsion rate of this kind of iuds so that's all for today thank you hope you can understand this chapter thank you thank you so much